A wild weekend of college football, and we start with the Longhorns. Before they get to the Aggies last night, final home game of the season. Senior night at Royal Texas Memorial Stadium. Blake Gideon, he started every game as a Longhorn. Loudest ovation as expected. Fozzie Whitaker out on crutches after the knee injury last week ended his UT career, Fozzie and his family. And then the Longhorns and K-State go to work and both the running backs are back. Malcolm Brown and Joe Bergeron, they combined 20 carries, 73 yards. The defense, they were back as well. Colin Klein, second leading rusher in the Big 12, and defense had an answer every time that he tucked it away. But the offense continues to struggle since that back-to-back -back of Kansas and Texas Tech where they scored 95 points. David Ash is picked off, and the Longhorns are down 3-0. That led to a field goal. Kansas State couldn't drive the ball. Then fourth and one, and Trey Allen jumps off sides. Game tied at three late in the half, so they decide to punt away. Fair catch. Alex Zumberg is close, but certainly no contact. But you see the flag fly on the fumble. Texas recovered the fumble, and watch again. Zumberg really didn't get that close to Tremaine Thompson and the Texas sideline after they see it on the jumbo trime go absolutely ballistic but that is not a reviewable play so instead of the Longhorns having the football and scoring territory K-State has the ball end of the half third and long Colin Klein doesn't complete many just nine of 17 but a huge third down pickup right along the sideline to Sheldon Smith and that leads to this a backbreaker with seconds to go in the half Chris Harper, the touchdown, and just like that, K-State has a 10-3 lead. Second half, Ash on play action overthrows D.J. Grant. Ty Zimmerman with the pick. Zimmerman had two picks last year in the Longhorns' loss in Manhattan. And once again, Ash's interception leads to points. Third down, and Colin Klein so dangerous in the red zone. His 25th rushing touchdown. He's too shy of Ricky Williams' Big 12 record. So they make the move to Case McCoy in the third quarter looking for a spark. Still no Jackson Shipley. Oh, by the way, there's John Harris on crutches. He started at wide receiver early on. Now McCoy gets it going. Play action to Blaine Irby, and what a story there. Irby's first catches since 2008, first touchdown since 08, and the Longhorns are within seven, 17 to 10. And then on a third and one, Cody Johnson out of the wild, and a wild run. Cody, though, is run down from behind by Nigel Malone. Longhorns in business, but they cannot punch it in for a tying touchdown. Third down play, looking for DJ Grant in the corner. Misfire there, so they do settle for another Justin Tucker field goal. And now down by four, and they had chances. Defense kept getting the ball back. This is a fourth down play, and McCoy is sacked, so K-State gets it. Horns get it back after defensive play. And how about this? Airing it out to Mike Davis, just about a yard long. And once again, Texas would give it away. And finally, they get it with seconds to go. And this is it. Last ditch effort. They need a miracle. K State, of course, playing back in prevent. And Case, all he can do is throw it short and hope for a little lateral. Instead, incomplete. Longhorns lose to K-State for the fourth consecutive time, and you can't help but go back to think about that interference call on the punt that really changed the game. Unbelievable. Just really deflating. I can't talk about the call, but it, uh, we get the ball before the half, and it ends up being a, a situation where we get three to seven points, and instead we give them seven, so it's a 14-point swing, possibly. If you told me we would hold... Colin Klein to four yards rushing, 83 yards passing. I would have known we'd have won the game. It's always deflating when you lose. It, just like the score with nine seconds left in the half. I thought it was amazing the guys came back and played a better second half than they did first half after you give up points going in uh, like that and that, that sequence of events. Really proud of the way those guys have played. Those guys have really taken to their craft and worked hard to become better football players through the course of the season. There's really no way to tell. Um, you know, the, the yards or whatever that you give up, it's, it's completely different from how points are scored. So we figured that out so many different ways, and we need to find a way to keep people out of the end zone whenever, uh, whenever our team needs it. You never know how it's going to turn out. It's our job. We didn't force enough turnovers defensively, and, you know, it's on me, again, as a leader, on me as a, as a defensive leader. we got to get more turnovers. we got to get the ball out, and so we didn't do enough. We ran up and down the field. We didn't score like we should have, and the two turnovers kill you, and you can't turn the ball over. Our offense moved the ball a lot better than theirs. 
That's the sad part about it. This isn't my first year to be a backup, so uh, I, I've been, I've learned, uh, I've watched a lot of great quarterbacks, and I know that you know. Not only is it just if someone makes a couple mistakes, but you're one ankle sprain away, you're one everything away. And, uh, and I know Coach Harson does a great job of preparing me week to week, just like I'm going to start the game. So uh, uh, there's, no, there's no excuse for anything of not playing well or any of that. I was prepared, I studied, and, 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 I, and I've been preparing for that moment for a long time. We won't make any decisions right now. We'll go back and watch the tape. Um, you know, I like what Case did when he came in and provided a spark there. And, and uh, you know, but that position, you know, like I've said all along, is we're developing two quarterbacks and for these type of situations right here to, to be able to come in and play and, and win a game.